started shooting all this stuff uh, because I, I thought it would be a good idea to show the fans what we, uh, what we do behind the, behind the scenes. <laughs> Take it, bitch! You know, I joined this band in, in February 2005. It's now like April 2009, so it's been like four years and it's been a lot of fun, man. It's been uh, a lot of crazy shit's happened and a lot of good stories and I've had some of the best times of my life, man. I, I, you know, I got up on stage and, and sang in front of 85,000 people, man, and had them all doing this just because I told them to, man. It was crazy. You motherfuckers want to be on a DVD? Then I want to see the biggest fucking pit. I'm grateful to all the fans that come out and still buy our records and come out to shows and buy our shirts and are uh, ravenous. Well, this was actually just to show fans what it's like backstage, man, and, and what happens when these guys get drunk and when funny shit happens and when we're in weird parts of the world and weird food. and It's something, man. It's something outside of just seeing on them in a club or, or a video or, you know, it's something that you... Hopefully the DVD shows you stuff that you don't ever get to see. I don't want to be in your DVD. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be in my DVD? I don't, I don't want, want to be in your DVD. Exodus was formed before me, um, you know, in a high school band room, like, you know, a lot of other bands, you know. Uh. Early 80s, like in uh, Richmond, El Sobrani area, which is like a East Bay suburb of San Francisco, Oakland area. You know, Exodus was like the, the premier Bay Area band. It was formed by Kirk Hammett, myself, and a guy named Carlton Melson. The first gig we ever did was like a party. We did we did Led Zeppelin covers and we had like three originals and that uh, quickly evolved into like a power trio with a different bass player, Jeff Andrews and uh, Kirk and myself. And we rolled along as a three piece for like three years or something like that until Gary joined up with the band. Tom and I grew up like you know, 50 yards away from each other, just on the opposite sides of a park called Davis Park. And so I knew Tom, you know, because I used to ride motocross with these guys that lived down the street from him. And uh, I knew Tim Agnello, the guitar player I eventually replaced, because I went to school with him. And, and it was through them, they played uh, the Richmond High Music Room after school one day. And uh, that's the first time I ever met Kirk Hammett. Okay. So Kirk was in the band. He went off to join Metallica, which was a, you know, who wouldn't do it? Uh, I actually, you know, went out, to, went to a Ted Nugent Scorpions concert with Kirk, and we hit it off right away, and uh, so I was his guitar roadie from that moment on. You can't call him a tech, because all we did was, like, pour beer and drink beer, you know? So it was, was Gary Kirk's roadie first, right? Yeah, I showed him a couple licks. And Oh, Gary, Gary, Gary fucking when I first later, saw him, broken, Gary, really? Gary couldn't play shit. Oh, when he first started. Oh, when Kirk left to Metallica, right, and it was like six month period, and all of a sudden Gary came on, and Gary was shredding like Ingbe, right. Because once he fucking got together with this guy, all of a sudden fucking No Life came together. And first time I met Gary, we were shoplifting together at an Alpha Beta store. I got detained for stealing batteries and beef jerky. You know, we found Bailoff, Kirk joins Metallica, we go through a couple of guitar players, Mike Mong and Evan McCaskey, and then we finally found Rick, you know, and there was the Bonded by Blood lineup. Well, actually, Jeff Andrews was fired from the band, and then uh, we hired Paul's friend Rob McKillop on bass, and then you had the lineup. You know, I think it worked out good for Gary because I don't think Kirk couldn't have carried the songwriting, you know, the way Gary has. When Rick came into the fold, he was more like Kirk's replacement, I guess you would say, because Gary took over the lead position. Tom, who, who thought of the name? You know, we were just kind of throwing around names, and, and Kirk and I actually came up with the name, and we, we weren't really certain of its biblical meaning, but we knew it was a Bob Marley song, and we knew that it was a, you know, a chapter in the Bible. We weren't really sure what it was about or anything. We just kind of liked the way it sounded and it just kind of fit, so. And it kind of rolls nice off the tongue, you know? <laughs> Exodus. Or if you're, you know, from Chile, it's Exodus. 
So once fucking Bailov, you know, once the bad decision was made by these guys, you know, was it a, a proper decision to fire Paul? You know, it's one of those things where it's easy to look back, especially after he passed away, to say, oh, it was a terrible decision. But, you know, we were trying to write a new album and, you know, he was having a really difficult time with the material. You know, he was probably depressed because he didn't have any money and he was kind of a mess doing lots of drugs. And looking back, Scared to wrong to judge somebody that way because I've been in the same predicament myself. In hindsight, that was a mistake, you know, but this band's been based on a few mistakes here and there. Right. <laughs> Did we achieve more success ultimately with Zetro? Yes. Does history look back now more fondly on Paul? Yes, you know. And the funny thing is, like in the 80s and stuff, Paul wasn't appreciated as much, you know, as he should have been. And you say, well, shit, you know, when he died, we were all of them total fucked up mess and the reunion with Paul in 97 people started appreciating him and appreciating Bonded by Blood a lot more and you know that tour was kind of like a retribution or you know it was a redemption tour you know us and Paul getting to go out and play metal again and you know, kind of right it wrong it made, it made some shit go come full circle what's up with this this looks like almost a full house of fucking insane media I was at my mom's where I was living, you know, and uh, and I get a call from Lita, his girlfriend, and and so uh, hysterical and says Paul's in the hospital, you know, something happened, and uh, when I met with the neurologist and, and stuff and, and looked at the CAT scans and everything, and she said like right here in Erie, he'd had two minor strokes, and had never really figured it out until they told me that because Paul's speech over the last year year and a half of his life had gotten really slurred you know but Paul always spoke lightning fast and sometimes you know you, you know you just had to keep up but you know that's a sure sign of a stroke you know and uh, there were times when he'd say something to me and I just pretend I understood it because I just couldn't make out what he was saying and he's just hyper and drunk and uh, on top of all that you know you add some vodka and add some methamphetamine on top of a slurred speech you know from a minor you know small stroke you know fucks everything up. They knew that we were like the closest thing to like a day-to-day -day family he had, you know, and and so they gave me like full rights over his body and his status, I guess you'd call it. And so we made the decision to have the plug pulled at two minutes to midnight because they always loved the Iron Maiden song and we just, you know, you know Paul would like to tie it to us and tie it to one of his favorite bands of all time, I guess. But, you know, he didn't make it that far. You know, he expired on his own. He fucked up some well-laid plans. Because we all planned to, like, all meet there, you know, at about 11.30 and make that decision at exactly 11.58. But uh, he, he just said, fuck you guys. I'm not going out that easy. I'm a guitar player. Right. Every time Exodus play, who do it? Who did I want to stand behind? Tom. Tom. <laughs> because oh, he's so fucking good. so blew me away. I'm gonna say it for the record, man. Tom Lunding is the best thrash drummer. Hey, ever. the best drummer ever. You know, he's the reason I'm in this band. I mean, he was uh, my biggest fan. He was like, yeah, I want that guy, and he kept calling, and he kind of started the whole process going. And Terry Bozio called me a worker. Yeah! <laughs> that's what I'm talking about! And he yeah. said I have the fastest 30 second notes of these. Yeah, ever. that's yeah. what I'm talking about! And I said, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> Tom's just a really just a sweet, nice guy, man. He's like a, he's almost like a hippie kind of. He's always like, hey, hey. When he gives me a finger, I'm like, it don't even, it's not even, it's not you, dude. Stop. You know what I mean? But he always does it anyway. Dude, you said the funniest thing on stage tonight. You said. I'm documenting a documentary. <laughs> Thank you.
Exodus non-metal moment. See, Explain what that is. See, this is the most non-metal moment. <laughs> Explain what you guys are doing right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Ah. <laughs> it's just fabulous, you know? <laughs> you just Erase uh, that. Nope. <laughs> Where are we, Jack? Bakersfield? We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Big storm brewing on. And that's our black West Oakland pimp ride. That's the P. Diddy van. It's the P. Diddy van. The P. Diddy van, the P. Diddy van is fucked. Tito is from Germany, but he doesn't have an accent anymore. He sounds like he's from Northern California. Stephen Hart at work. Get the fucking off me, I'm serious. Oh boy. Look, check this out. This fish is breathing the air water. The air water, I'm so stupid. He's drinking the air. The air. What, a fucking genius. what I meant to say was that fish is breathing. What a fucking genius. Putting its, it was putting its lips above the water. What a fucking genius. <laughs> documenting it, documenting it. I, I said I'm stupid as soon as I said it. Close up of Lee, the, the Adonis out in the water, the golden skinned, gleaming god, guitar hero. that though because uh, tomorrow the morning I want to sit down and listen to that because like you're doing a lot of different types of things and I'm hearing some things that are super killer. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking when 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 Steve and Gary called and asked you to be an exorcist? What was I thinking? Yeah what well, like I wasn't thinking anything. I mean you know uh, probably what I think when Stephen what see I was thinking about I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. How do you compare your style of playing to Tom's style? I you know what I can't there's no comparison because Tom has he's he's probably one of the most original thrash metal drummers uh, out there in my opinion he's probably one of the hardest uh, to to cop style from because he does things, just the way he does things, the way he goes about his approach to drum fills and everything is just, he's, he's got a very signature style. I mean, I knew that way back in the day. So Rob, you know you got some big shoes to fill. This fuckhole's new blood, so. Who is in our band nowadays, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Sound as hard as it is, you know what I mean? Like, it's 
but the timing is just for the click and stuff. It's just it's just not working very well. <laughs> you ready to track it now? The video shoot for that just sucked so bad. Lee and our former manager Steve Warner stayed in the bar at the hotel and just got shit faced. So, you know, my manager didn't even make it to the shoot and Lee was just wrecked. But we started at like six in the morning. It's blazing hot. We're on that desert area outside of LA where it's Captain Kirk fought the green lizard dude, you know? But so we start in the early morning. It's like it, it goes from like 100 degrees and, and it ends at like five in the four in the morning under a freeway overpass in LA in a really fucked up neighborhood. And we're freezing cold at this point, and uh, it was miserable. But I hate making videos anyway, because they're always miserable. But uh, you know, the chicks are hot. But of course, we didn't get to be there when the chicks were filming, which, you know, at least they would have made up for the nightmarish day the day before if I could have, like, helped apply their makeup. Yeah, it was the it was the bullet train in Japan. We were riding from uh, Osaka to Nagoya. What is that? A giant honeycomb? <laughs> a honeycomb's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. No, no, no. Hello, Tokyo. How you fucking doing? Yeah. All right, fuckers, this is off our new record, Shovel and a Kill Machine, and it's called Death Amphetamine. Uh, death Amphetamine. I, I had like this little, little like glitch in it. And the, the problem is the lyrics are so set in stone with the riff that if you got off just one beat, you would, I would throw everyone else off, and I would be off wrong, and I could never get back on. It would take me until the end of the verse to get it right, and I, I did it for probably a hundred shows. I made the same mistake night after night after night, and to the point where the band was like, we don't want to play this song anymore, you suck, and then... Fucking Gary yelling at me every night, I could hear him in the back, like, you're off, you're off! Every night, you're not helping me by yelling at me at the same time when I'm trying to sing, motherfucker. This is our backstage. This is all of our uh, spare equipment. I mean, just in case, we got the bongos. And I think we'll be set tonight. <laughs> Somebody asked me what I wanted to see tonight before the show, and I said, I want to see some fucking blood! One night in Bangkok. And I got killed myself. Come on, Mr. Gibson. Yeah, yeah. Here? Yes, you right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay, good. that's chill. Alright, I'm gonna put an end to this. Yeah! 
Uh, one of those is exactly what we're on right now, just in case uh, the viewer is wondering. That was pretty scary. I, I, in Thailand, they have these little, these little cabs, and it, it's like a, it's like a motorcycle with a cab on it. <laughs> You know, there's no traffic rules there whatsoever, so... We have no idea where we are. He's just zipping in between buses and cars and everything else, and then he, he turns down this little alleyway, and I was just sure that, you know, 10 or 12 guys were just gonna come out and just start beating the crap out of me and Rob and take everything we had. And, and uh, we ended up back at the hotel, and it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Most exciting cab ride of my life, I have to say. And now for another non-metal moment. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> When we went to fucking see Exodus, Exodus has the most violent shows ever I've seen. I want you to kill everyone over there! But the the people were all friendly. Hey. Right. You know? If you got killed, fucking, you got bloody face. Forget you got picked it. up. Your friends picked you up. <laughs> but it was the most violent shows I've ever seen in my life. Right. But it was all friendly. Mm. Good, friendly, violent fun. Yeah, exactly. Good, friendly, violent fun. Right. And those idiots would come in. It's like, oh, this is what metal. Oh, we got, we got to kill each other. And it's like, no, this is not how it is. There was like 300 people. There were like family. And then there were other people coming in. Right. And those 300 people said, you know what? We don't need this shit. It's out. It's, right. it's over. So let's play the song in the normal position. I have to redo it all my shit. No, 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 no! Listen to this. I get a case this is great. Wait, wait listen to the ghetto. Listen to the ghetto. <laughs> yes. This is it. This is how Hapri would do it, right? <laughs> See, you do that. And we'll play the whole song. You motherfuckers gotta put it on me like that? Yeah. 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 I, gotta, I gotta take a guitar lesson to get you to play it. So the guy comes off stage and he goes, God, that was the fucking worst sounding fucking stage ever. And Lee goes, yeah, and it was all coming out of your amps. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever comes out of your amps, if you think it sucks, it does. <laughs> Don't complain to your sound man. I get double, du double bean, double cheese. Or what, one bean, double cheese. 
What are you talking about? Turning me down? What do you got? What are you talking about? I got 199 one cheese double P. <laughs> Get out of my phone, vomit. No, I don't good. I'm not hungry. But thank you, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, was gonna be an ideal. <laughs> I can't time to set off a fire across here. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen Lee, man. He was on fire, dude. Was he? We had this emo kid sitting next to his table. Emo fag! <laughs> emo fag! With fucking barbecue sauce all over his face, eating ribs. Eating a, he ate a fucking one pound burger. It was a big, it was a, actually one pound of meat. Ah, gah, gah. And now, it's time for another Exodus non metal moment. Gary's Nail Salon. So, am I gonna see some fucking mayhem and craziness? Are you guys gonna kill each other for me? What about you, G? You gonna kill somebody? I don't think I'm gonna puke tonight. Fun. I might not stay till because I had two fish tacos about three hours ago. Yeah, uh, Rob's. You know, he's one of those performers that uh, he gets he gets real nervous sometimes, and uh, and he he pukes a lot, man. He it, uh, you know it, he gets right before we get on stage, the crowd will start chanting and. Rob, you can just see him. He just gets sick, and he just he throws up. Yeah, for for first, I mean, couple of tours. I mean, uh, he was throwing. He just only stopped throwing up. I mean, it just kind of went away. Nobody noticed it, and he brought it up the other days. Like, wow, I haven't thrown up before the show in a while. We're standing on stage, and Rob's like feeling kind of queasy, and he goes, he points down at this guy, and he goes, "You move," <laughs> and uh, he just launched it, and it was like. It was like a perfect rainbow. It looked like beer, but he doesn't even drink beer. It was like just this perfect arch. It was like the St. The Saint Louis arch of, of vomit. It was pretty amazing, actually. You know, uh, Rob got the gig, as Rob will be the first to tell you, he got the, he got the spot because he showed up first for auditions, you know. I was uh, guitar tagging for a few bands, and I got an opportunity to go on tour with Exodus during the Megadeth tour when Steve Esquivel was singing. We had a whole bunch of people send in tapes and stuff. And they called me and said, hey man, when that tour ends, why don't you come out and audition and try to sing? And I got there five days before NAMM. We rehearsed for three days. I sang a bunch of songs. We drove to Nam, and then while we were at Nam, they said, "Hey, man, you're the new singer of Exodus." I was like, "Right on, dude." I just, I, I just had confidence in him. You know, for, he sucked the first day he showed up, but you know, I had faith in him, and he proved me right. You know, you know, people will tell me how great he is, and I say, "Look, he makes me look like a genius, like I, some Sven Gali who really saw some, but he did it on his own. You know, he worked real hard, and and, uh, and he gets better all the time." Uh, Rob's got a lot of, of energy on stage. You know, he uh, he really puts his personality into his performance. You know, which a lot of people don't really do. You know, he's he's very aggressive on stage. He sweats like a you know like a pig. You know, he just lets it he just lets it all out. You know what I mean? So that's that's killer. I want you motherfuckers to know, I wear this shirt because I'm a fucking American terrorist. He'll do things that bother me and, and make me cringe a little bit, you know, if I try to like stifle him too much, you know, and you know, I'll, I'll take away what makes Rob Rob, you know, so. And for all those extremist fucking cocksuckers that flew those fucking buildings on 9-11, I got fucking nothing but fucking death for them. Sometimes he, he'll say shit and he'll look at me and he knows I'm looking at him like, man, just shut up. But, you know. but he's still, I mean, every now and then, I mean, he throws out a bomb. But the difference now that I think it's like when, <laughs> when he throws a bomb, he walks off the stage and he knows, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. No fucking remorse, no repent. 
kill every single fucking one of them. It was like, well, what's the problem? You know, I would kind of get in an argument, you know, and he got all fired up and, you know, because Rob is kind of, he's like a hothead, you know. And then he would walk away, kind of let, you know, the dust settle and come back and he's like, yeah, okay, I see, you know. <laughs> I don't know, the only thing that makes it really uncomfortable is when he rubs his gig clothes against me on stage because that boy stinks after a few gigs. Huh? Shit, I gotta piss, I gotta shit. Fuck! And he knows it. And so he grabs me and hangs onto me and just rubs on it. And like, and you know, so now my gig clothes have that smell. But see, I put mine in the laundry after he does that. He wears them another 20 gigs. Bunch of fucking pussies. It's like with Rob, I mean, that's his whole image. A lot of people are going, God, I'm just terrified of that guy. Look him, him on stage, you know. And I'm like, if you really know Rob, I mean, he's just a giant teddy bear, you know. He's like a gentle giant. I mean, of course you don't want to piss him off. Pick a side, motherfuckers! We're always like in the beginning, we're always saying, Rob, you never even thank the crowd. And I don't think he did it, you know, like in the beginning because you know he was disrespecting them because he was just so nervous like what to say what to come up and remember things you know yeah, i mean i've never met somebody like that just cool you know and just kind and you know and all that i mean i'm not even supposed to ruin his image here <laughs> this is brendan's dog but, um, well, yeah, we're, we're not looking for it. like uh, that perfect. Here's line reading and plow yeah. through mistakes. We make yeah. mistakes, just keep talking. I mean, we kind of hate traditional cartoon voiceover stuff, you know. It's it's sometimes works a lot better if it's more natural and kind of like you know that's what we do with Death Clock. I mean, me and Tommy. First season, we used to record one line at a time and kind of go back and forth. Hey, you guys oh, love to procrastinate to too. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these lame, stiff dildos. Yeah, regular jackoffs probably don't even really listen to Death Clock. They might listen to them, but not like we do, man. You know what I like to do? <laughs> What's that? Beat their fucking asses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, if it wasn't for those cops, I'd beat them in the face with a meat tenderizer. I jerk off so much and beat off so much that it looks like I jerk off with 40 grit sandpaper. <laughs> Can you do line 29 and 30 also? Uh, sure. <laughs> you don't sound like you want some. <laughs> What do you have against line 29? <laughs> Let's go get him, guys! <laughs> Somebody throw me at him. Yeah, <laughs> someone, someone, someone throw me at him. Somebody throw me at him! <laughs> well, I'll let you use my parents' hot topic card. Yeah, yeah all right! Good old! Yeah, I was at the original Batch Fuhrer Massacre Fest. My little sister didn't really like death clocks, so I made her drink motor oil and she got real sick. Whatever. Call me when you got a real story, you f***ing dildo. So come on down to Duncan Hills and try any death clock Norwegian black and blood coffee. It's totally safe. Totally safe. It, it, ch do this. Tell Matthias to make sure these people, like the, all the back line has speaker lines Are you already. Are documenting a documentary? And then I won't even bring <laughs> speaker cords. Well, South America will do the porn stash, you know, that's what we call it. I wanted to uh, Look at the mustaches, they roll. So you know, at first everybody was on board and of course Gary Bale did the last man and Jack actually never even agreed to do it at first, you know, and He's always got his D'Artagnan thing going, you know, the Three Musketeers. Uh, geez, that is the best bag in the whole airport. <laughs> is there going to be a riot tomorrow? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not the 1,200 kids are going to be in here tonight. This is what it looks like when it's empty. My balls itch. Dude, you look at that, you're, you're all over this thing. It'd be you, and then my bald spot, be killer. And then my pack of hot dogs, as Jack puts it. Because everybody, when you build your head back, so Jack says a pack of hot dogs. What's up, dudes? Exos! Exos! Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> Lee would have just got torn limb from limb. <laughs> if we would have jumped right there pulling your arms Colombia off. Locals. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Colombia Locals. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Puta. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <have> everyone. <laughs> 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 This is like the opposite of Recife. <laughs> I know, they're all happy to wow. storm our van. Holy oh, shit, dude. look at this line. <laughs> 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 Why are the fucking lights on? Why are the lights on? We have to stop, like, what's going on? They're like, yeah, the cops want to pay off. If you don't pay the cops $200 American, they're gonna, they're gonna empty the club out and end the show. So we had to pay them 200 bucks to turn the lights back off and finish the show. It was funny, but that's South America, dude, you know? Pay off the police or you ain't playing. jump in the crowd and they fucking like one guy just grabs my collar on my shirt and just rips it off and people are like like grabbing me and I'm like I'm trying to get back out and I'm just fucking leveling people man fucking just bah, bah. <laughs> I finally get up on the barrier and I'm trying to get off and they got me by my legs and they're trying to get my boots off They were out of their minds. I was so fucking mad, <laughs> but I realized how fucking crazy they were that I should have just not done that. Pigs are like a delicacy down there, and they call it uh, they call it cooey. I want to eat a fucking guinea pig, man. If I get a chance to eat a guinea pig, I'm gonna. You know, I, I don't think I can go to a pet store here, buy one, and 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 cook it up. But I, I think that's. I don't know if I could do that. But if someone had already done all the work, I probably would take a few bites and see what it was. And... So instead, I'm gonna eat some pirate. I could eat a fish head. Are you gonna eat the head? Oh, gonna fuck eat the yeah. Eye, I'm gonna eat it. Look at that fish head. Eat the eye, Rob. He ate some stuff that seriously made me gag. I'm gonna eat the other eye. This eye, okay? Yep. Oh, nice. Did it taste blue or hazel? It tastes, uh, I think that was a brown eye. <laughs> 
I want that. Can I eat that? Get it, get it, get it. Can we get? Can we cook that up? Uh, oh, look at that brain. Oh. I got the brain. Metalheads wearing hoods. We've had this fantasy probably since we ever recorded Bonded by Blood of us sitting on the front of some fucked up porch somewhere in Kentucky, you know, overalls, beards, straw in our mouth, just doing a banjo induced versions of of these metal songs. Jack's become quite the banjo picker in the band and we actually have a bluegrass project on the side. Coffin Hunter, shameless plug. They let me sing it and I, you know, I had envisioned a bunch of toothless five-part harmonies, vocals behind us and it was great. Gary actually played the same solo that he played on the record on the, on the uh, bluegrass version of it. It was just fun. I mean, something to do for fun. I think his cock is out. Uh, homeless sex. <laughs> homeless sex is rad. You can just drop her off anywhere. <laughs> what do you got to say to America, Jack? Vote Republican. Mm. Jack's, Jack's, he's kind of like a, he's a walking contradiction, that guy. Because for most of my time I've known Jack, he's a non-tax paying, out of work Republican. <laughs> It's just fucking a Star Wars geek made good, I guess. <laughs> well, I have this friend, Sean Smithson. Uh, he's a friend of all of ours, actually. He's a guy from the Bay Area, musician, talented guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go try out for this band, this band War Dance. It's the, it's Tom and Gary, Gary uh, from Exodus. And I was like, oh, well, you know. And he's like, come on over. You know, they're they're cool. Introduce you to them. It'll be cool. So I drove him out, and he he tried out, and. I uh, met Tom and Gary, they were super nice, super nice guys to me, you know, just kind of welcomed me and, you know, and I realized, you know, the there was a bass rig sitting there and no bassist and stuff and I'm also, you know, what's up with you guys as a bass player? And I, oh, he never shows up. And I was like, hey man, I'll be here every day, you know, give me a shot. And Gary grabbed the tape and said, come back and come back on Thursday with Sean. And, uh, yeah, I came back and I got the gig and Sean didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Some people still like to think of Jack as like some new guy, like, you know, oh, there's a revolving door of musicians. Jack's been in the band for like 12 years now. You know, we had a few people offering to do videos for us, and we ended up, you know, being uh, voices on uh, cartoons and Metalocalypse. And so we went with John, the director. He's like, "Hey, man, I've done music videos in the past." And My neck hurts so bad because I don't headbang like a 19-year-old anymore during during a concert. And you know, everybody was banging as hard as they possibly could. At the end of it, Rob's grimacing, and he's not grimacing because he's trying to be heavy, he's grimacing because he's in fucking pain. I mean, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I, I didn't want to just do the standard live performance thing. We always do that. No I thought that the Riot Act was the best, best video that we've ever done, for sure.
the ride egg video, it was we, the, we, the power blew out, the generator blew up, and we didn't have power, so we sat around for half a day, and it was uh, it was tough doing that shit all day. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I think John Snep did a killer job on it, and you know we can't wait to work with those guys again. Hopefully. Mr. Julia, is, uh, she had that, sh that show on Uranium. Hey, good, how you been? Last time I saw you, I was a guitar tech. And I met her on the, on the Megadeth tour when I was a tech, and I was a guitar tech. What are you doing now? Oh, I don't know, I'm just a uh, drum tech now. Yeah, good to see you. You don't remember me, do you? And then I ran into her at the House of Blues, and she's like, you know, she came to see the Exodus show, and she's like, oh, I know you from somewhere. I remember you. I, had a, I had a, where we met. I had a, a pink and blue mohawk then. And we were, it was, I was a tech I know, for, I know. I Where, you know, who are you? I was like, uh, I'm the drum tech, you know? I was a guitar tech for Exodus on the Megadeth tour. Yeah. Oh, that's where yeah, I got that. Yes, that's where we met. <laughs> After the show, I walk in the dressing room, she walks up to me, she goes, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Lee needs to come over and do what I do and rock with you during the slow part. Because then we can all get on the same tempo. Lee needs to rock with you. Yeah. The slow part and shovel. You guys got to follow me on that. Yeah, I come, set the tempo. Come to the yeah, riser and right? we'll follow you. But when I'm at the riser track. and you're over there and I but can't hear you. That, there was one other fuck up, but just, other than no, that, it was just, awesome. We'll gather and we'll follow you. Right. I'm in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and um, I have 101 fever. If one person gets sick on a bus, it goes to everybody. And what happens is it goes for the whole tour because once the cycle goes through, if your body isn't ready, you'll end up getting sick again, you know, like maybe once or twice. I've had the chills and all day and sweats. <laughs> Wow, you feel like wrong. Just, uh, I'm dying, man. I'm fucking. Having to sing and perform while you have a fever or your throat hurts, it's just, it's just the worst. It's the worst, man. It, it, you know, I mean, I know people. That's why they, when they get sick, they call in work and they don't go to work. And you know, if I don't go to work, you know, a lot of people that bought tickets, they, you know, they, they don't see a show and the crew don't get paid and the club, you know, we gotta play. You gotta do it. That's why we have a big bottle of Germex on the bus because we shake all these hands and we gee. We're about to go on. I throw up from the exertion of just my whole body just screaming at the top of my lungs for an hour and a half and doing that when you're sick is just brutal man it's it's really uh, a difficult thing to do you look like Jesus I am Jesus <laughs> but come on, I Jesus blow me. Hey, you take the ass because you're Satan. I'll take the pussy. <laughs> Lee, I've known Lee is long, longer than anybody, almost longer than anybody was ever in Exodus. Well, I just basically got a phone call from uh, Steve Warner, who was at that time um, manager of Exodus. Lee is just this crazy Russian guy I knew. They needed me to come down and maybe play some solos on the album because Rick wasn't showing up. He was missing in, in action. We were like played guitar and got really, really good, really fast. Uh, so I came in, did some solo on, you know, and uh, that's when Gary said, "Well, how about you know doing this more on a permanent basis? You know, want you to join?" He waited 
20 something years and finally placed in your cities. You know, I mean, we've known each other for a very long time, so that was just kind of an easy thing, you know. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes I ever heard Lee say was in Japan when we were doing some press. And he said, Priest made him want to play metal. Exodus showed him what kind of metal he wanted to play. And I, I thought that was pretty fucking complimentary. Lee and me have become really close friends over the last, you know, five years. Like, like I consider him like brother kind of friendship. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, a, it's almost like I've known him my whole life. You know, he's just one of the most gifted musicians I've ever, you know, had the experience to play with. And he's he's a brilliant guitar player. I, personally, I love George Lange, Demartini. They right. smoke. I mean, George Lange, fucking God. So listen, you were in Heathen, right? Yeah. But you were at home listening to Demartini, to Rat Records. Absolutely, but I'm hiding it from everybody. But if you would ask me, I would right. never admit it. Uh, <laughs> And now I admit it, I, I'm in your face, I, right. I, I don't give a shit, Right. whatever you think. He's just, uh, and just an overall really, really good human being. I mean, you know, it's painful sometimes watching him because uh, he loves his kid more than anything. And he, you know, he misses a big chunks of her growing up and, and it's all for this band. So, can you imagine not seeing the six months of your kid's life when it's three months old to play guitar in Exodus? I mean, <laughs> how did I see you fucking? How about, how about, how about, how about Doug Aldridge though? Oh, Doug Aldridge? Doug? Doug? Ripped a new one to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Me and Lee just, we get along great. We, we laugh all the time. Yeah. And, Doug Aldridge? Oh yeah, fucking what, what, what are your name? Oh yeah, fucking what, what, what are your name? Doug Aldridge fucking smoked everybody off the stage, walked off, totally humble, it's like I loved Exodus. I'm like, please, please, please play all my solos on the next album. <laughs> please. He's just a great dude, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm grateful that I know him as a human. So what are you doing, Lee? <laughs> he doesn't know. Do you even know what you're doing? <laughs> no. The highlight for me was watching the watching Lee drinking, right, and uh, and the bus being slammed into, and then he spilled the drink on himself, and he got mad, and then yelled at the driver, "You fucking asshole! Made me spill my drink!" And he was going, "Oh my neck! Oh, oh my neck! Oh my back! Yeah, my back! Call my lawyer! Oh my back! I'm hurt! I'm hurt! I'm hurt!" Why are you guys here so early for the show? And oh yeah? Right on. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. We're gonna go interview some people for the band. Man. You know, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I think we have the best fans in the world, you know? And I certainly think we have the most violent, but you know, it's a sense of community and and they fuck shit up and they, they get fucked up, but they, you know, it's not done out of any like mean spiritedness, you know? Fucking badass, man. The, the fact that they've been at it this long and they're still just as fucking heavy as shit, that's fucking great, man. They've run the gambit of, of people, you know, in the, in the country. We have, uh, you know, some really smart, I would even say geeky, nerdy fans. They're uh, old school thrash legends. Why do you think they're legends? Def define legend for me, please. Uh, because they helped pioneer the genre of thrash metal. Uh, all the way to some of the dumbest fuckers you've ever met in your life. They're, they're, that's our bread and butter. Dude, you, you took a guitar lesson from him, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bailoff used to call them the two IQers, and any time one of our songs started getting a little too brainy or complicated, he said, "You got to keep the two IQers happy." Exodus is uh, like Exodus is the best fucking thrash band yeah, I've ever seen. My they're pretty much the Godfathers. And you know they've stuck by this band through thick and thin. And now we have a whole new legion of like young kids who weren't even born when we were making Bonded by Blood, and it's it's pretty awesome. I'm 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 pretty thrilled. You know, it's it's good feeling. What's up, Exodus? Oh, you broke your collarbone. When did, when did you break your collarbone? Uh, stage time. And you broke your collarbone during the Exodus set? Yeah, you can see it sticking out of here. Some of the other guys. Oh, that is gnarly. <laughs> Sorry they, didn't, sorry they didn't catch it, bro. Yeah. They're supposed to. Too bad. It'll be a nice memory. <laughs> Who are you here to see? Exodus. How, how long have you been 
a fan of Exodus. Since the 80s. Right on. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Come on, start off the beginning. We're, you met Rick at a rave, is that I correct? Knew, I knew Rick, like, uh, you know, way back when, rave X, see big old bags of the E, where you stick your hand in. Any of you fine ass chicks out there watching this? Come get me. The guys who work out. Hold on, let me let me focus in on that. Go ahead. Like Gene Simmons. Just give me one really good bailout story. We were in Argentina, we were like sipping wine because we were stuck there. So we're sitting in this little cafe. And Paul goes to do this radio interview. So I phone him up and I use the voice from uh, Three Amigos, F8. He's having trouble learning like any new songs <laughs> other than the Bond by Blood shit. So I was like, hello, this is F8. Excuse me, my English not so good. <laughs> I, I see Exodus one year ago. And I see Exodus again this year. Same songs. You have a virtual plethora of musical selections that we can choose from. Why is this? I only hear same Exodus songs. And he just he put it all on Gary. I really like to do those songs. Yeah, you're the heaviest guy in the world. And Gary's got kids, you know, and we don't have time to learn songs or whatever. Anyway, he threw Gary under the bus. <laughs> Tell me about Rick. I hear about the time he fell through the stage. We played a uh, first show European tour in 1989, maybe 87, in Manchester, England. They'd built the stage up another like four feet higher because the first stage was low, big place, packed. They used particle board for the new stage surface including a really weak spot in the middle of the stage where we marked an X and our stage manager wrote, land here and win, Rick. But uh, Rick jumps off the top side of the top of the side fills, hits this particle board, goes right through, just disappears, like, like he jumped into a lake. <laughs> guitar just, what? It's crazy, all you see is his shoulders and the guitar straight up, they have to pull him out, they put a road case lid over it. Zetro jumps off the drum riser, but he lands on the weak spot, because he only jumped like off a two foot riser, Rick was like five feet in the air. And he lands right on the X where it said land here and win Rick, and he goes right through. Road case lids all over this stage by the end of the show. <laughs> Fucking, uh, the review was great though, said uh, despite various disappearing acts of God, the show was awesome. Nice. What's your favorite bailoff story, Gary? When he rejoined the band in 97 and sold his little camper trailer to two different people and fled town. <laughs> <laughs> they both showed up simultaneously. Sold the same trailer twice. <laughs> yeah. They both showed up at the same time to tow off their little trailer, one of those little egg-shaped little airstreams. Right. And, uh, what are you doing? It's my trailer. No, it's not. It's mine. I, I bought it from Paul. So did I. Where's Paul? Long gone, <laughs> on his way to play metal, <laughs> sing Bonded by Blood again with the boys. What about when he'd show up like at a, at a gig and he'd send messages? Paul is here. Paul is here. We'll sing Brain Dead. It was like an old telegraph, you know? Because yeah. it's like, out. Paul is here. Stop. We'll sing Brain Dead. Stop. <laughs> and now for another non-metal moment. I got. I just got the new uh, Darth Maul Saboteur, the very first book. It takes 33 years before the first movie. Oh, and then, yeah. Right. yeah. How many motherfuckers bought shovel headed kill machine? <laughs> really? How many douchebags downloaded that shit for free? <laughs> I knew it, you fucking cocksuckers. If you don't buy the album, that's fine. Download it for free, buy the fucking merch, get a fucking ticket. Support your fucking band. If you don't, I'm sorry, we're gonna retire. Okay. You don't need your shit. Right on. You know, and if you make an album and people just take it, 
you know, it's it's it sucks for us. It sucks it's for anybody who make, paid to make that album because we don't get to make them for free, you know. But I mean, every band, your budgets shrink because sales shrink. You get less money. You know? I mean, you're more and more dependent on tour and merchandise because that's you know the one thing they can't download tickets to your gig. And, you yeah. know, but you can absolutely fucking hit a button and steal the record itself. You know, if people were going out and stealing. 10 cars per one car that was, you know, rolling off the lot, they would fucking do something about it. But it's, but it's us, you know, dope smoking fucking or whatever people, and they don't give a fuck. Judges don't give a fuck. Politicians don't give a fuck. If people were out there stealing, you know, 9 out of 10 votes, you think the fucking, you know, president wouldn't fucking do something about it? People view musicians as like not needy. You know, if, like some people out there are so naive they think that anybody's made an album's rich. I went to one high school reunion in my life, right? And I showed up and people I hadn't seen since high school, you know, like, you know, they knew I was in the band. And this was at a time when the band was at its largest. But at its largest, you know, they like, what kind of, you know, man, I bet you got like, you got how many cars you got? You got a Ferrari? Lamborghini, you know, like those other days. I said, see that Nissan Sentra with no air conditioning, no radio out there? That's fine, all right? All right, cool, because we got something special that you've never, ever seen before at a fucking Exodus show. Her name is Katie Jacoby. She is a fucking violinist that is going to come jam with us. And she is going to blow your motherfucking minds, I promise you. I've never met anybody like Gary Holt, man. He is, <laughs> Gary Holt's crazy. <laughs> so, you know that the word athlete is not really a word athlete, it's like athlete. <laughs> but, because you, need, because you needed three syllables, you decided, I'm Gary Holt, I'm throwing it anyway, I don't care. Well, for starters, I am Gary Holt, I can do whatever I want. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> right, motherfucker. He's very funny, I'll give him that. He, he, Gary cracks me up, man. He. Uh, he has these little idiosyncrasies that are like no, like I can't under, like we don't under, I don't get it. <laughs> you show me where it says it's not athlete. Right? <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, what? Why is that important? Like I've had like knockdown fuck you arguments, man. Normally what happens is is I don't drink or do drugs and and they drink and when they get drunk sometimes they perceive me uh, out of out of context. Yeah. That means you think it's pronounced athlete. You're gonna go there again. I say it's <laughs> athlete. <laughs> You're the only one. Okay, good I'm, right. I'm right. No, he's not. Every dude in the NBA says the same fucking way. He's a really, really gifted guitar player, man. I mean, you know, one of the one of the greatest. Just a talented fucking guy, you know what I mean? Mr. Holt. At the end of the day, it was Gary's call to say, yeah, man, I want that guy as my singer. And he's he's allowed me to be myself on stage. He never asked me to be anyone else. I have said stuff on stage where he's like, oh, please, don't say that again. And I'm like, no, I'm going to say that. And then after a while, he's like, oh, whatever, say whatever you want. Tell 
me about Gary Holt. Let me get some Gary Holt stories. One one good Gary Holt story. No? Why does nobody want to talk about Gary? <laughs> Ross, can I have one good Gary story? Come on, I'll, I'll put black lines across your eyes. <laughs> and, 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 I'll, and I'll fill in your tooth. <laughs> uh, can you guys talk about that story in, uh, in South America with the guards, with the guns, and, the, and that whole... Yeah, this is drunk. You can't get me to tell a story. Well, it's, the problem is when you're drunk, and I'll... I'll... Hey, I'm and I'm wasted right now, okay? Really? Wasted. No. Not you. Stop it. Stop, Ryan. <laughs> I met Gary back in the 80s, probably at more first. But then we had uh, reconvened or continued our relationship on a place called The Ritz, where we had a wonderful evening uh, meeting uh, lovely ladies and Kate uh, uh, Barbiturates. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Holt, uh, as he tells the story, Bobby saved his life. As he was going down a flight of stairs, I reached down and grabbed him by the belt. He was, he was done. You're looking at the number one reason that Exodus survives. Long thousands and not. Last tour I did, my dog died. It was, uh, I was in Vienna, man, it was brutal. I'm leaving, let's go. I mean, imagine just picking up your whole life and leaving for a couple months and then coming back and hoping that you know, everything's the same. Up to the airport. Yeah, it definitely is tough being on tour. Most people don't get to travel the world, so I'm not complaining about the, the, the hard times off you know, when I'm, when I'm gone. And I'm kind of a loner anyway, so being around a bunch of people all the time just totally sucks, you know? I mean, I read two, three books a week when I'm on tour. Right? You know? I feel like I'm on drugs. Because <laughs> I haven't slept for fucking, I don't know, hours. Yeah, mullet, mullet, mullet. Rock Hard Joe was killer, and it's put we're such good friends with all the people at Rock Hard. Apparently, we ran over our set time a little bit. The Rock Hard Show. I remember it was uh, it was great, man. We had fun, man. We uh, you know, we were really uh, we were we were on that day. I remember they cut our set. They, you know, they, they cut the power off and they uh, pulled down our 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 backdrop while we were while we were playing. And, and the stage manager was about to get in an all-out fist fight with our drum tech Fozzie. But I, apparently, we ran over our set time a little bit. I was mad just because it was funny to be mad, and everyone was like tiptoeing around me, and I was like. Argh. So we just we played part of the song and had to quit mid-song, you know. No, we thought fuck up. We should have stopped when we. we yeah, it wasn't any big deal to me, you know. Rob was pretty pissed off. Fuck that guy! I will kick the shit out of that fucking asshole. I knew we were going over a little, you know. We probably shouldn't have, but we did. So fuck it. It's not like you know we even like Immortal anyway. Fuck them. <laughs> He's like, he's like a pit bull right now. He is. I love seeing him like that. That's when he's at his best. I looked at you and said, no strike, no strike. I looked at Rob, but Rob looked at me and convinced me to do it. Rob, why'd you do that? Fuck that guy. Fucking It was a good show, though. And now, it's time for another Exodus non-metal moment. Fuck that, step on it. No. Actually, I had to do that, dude. Hold on, hold on a second. Don't do it. There we go, yeah. Look at this red belly. 
Look at Gary. Get out my sunglasses. Yeah, there's the satanic hero saving a little bug. Because I love animals. If it was a person, I'd step right on it. It's God's creature. Gary's all upset. Civic Auditorium. Maybe there were 6,000 people that loved Metallica. There was 2,000 people that loved Exodus. But those 2,000 people would smash those 6,000 <laughs> people in pieces. What, 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 would it be you like? Know? It'd be like Lee against every grunge guy. Yeah, <laughs> I would stop every grunge guy in pieces. <laughs> and even James came out afterwards and said, "This is the last time we'll ever play with Exodus." Last time ever. We get to do a show with Agnostic Front, and I'm really stoked, man. It's uh, one of the highlights of my life right now. Look at that badass lefty over there. <laughs> I'm the unknown. <laughs> I saw Lamb of God do it, that's how I got the idea. You're gonna kill everybody over there! Just like you fucking pray hard, motherfuckers! But when you're in a weird country and you don't know the language, most people don't know when, what hold and go mean. They just wait till the music starts and they fucking go. And it's always comical when they go when I, when I, when I don't want them to. Fucking wait, motherfuckers! Give us a big smile and explain the tooth story. What happened? Bit down on a diabolical cookie in Winnipeg. Nice. Let me see it again. Oh, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so what happened? What, he was uh, falling off the, the scale yeah, a little bit? You know what are you doing? The fucking uh, the blast beats for fucking 8 to 0.8 meshes. Yeah. You know, long fucking meshes of blast beats. Right. It's the snare's gone. That's why I go off on the snare. All right. of a sudden the snare disappears. <laughs> and I hear the hi hat and the kicks, but they're still going. The snare's gone. Whose fault was it? Lee. Lee. Who was that guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> you? No. Listen to Lee. Tell me what happened to your nose. It's harder to jump up on a riser at 40, I think, than it is at 23. So, I mean, I thought it was like a great idea to jump on this drum riser, which was like pretty high. You know, zigged when he should have zagged and kind of got caught up on the carpet on the drum riser. And you know, there's no way I was going to make it. Next thing you know, wham! You know, <laughs> flew right, you know, my nose first, right into the cymbals. He's like knocking cymbals and shit into me. I don't want four stitches. What happened is I just dove into Tom's drums and then Tom, <laughs> who that? Who and then Tom got mad at me. <laughs> who are those certain people? You know, blood everywhere and like the... The crew guys thought I just got shot because they said there was so much blood. Yeah! I go out of my way and I make it my mission to like to treat people the way I want to be treated on tour, you know? We let people use our gear when there's not enough space. We strike the drums when we have to, you know? No, I exodus, all you guys are a bunch of assholes, and if I don't see you ever again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> Seeing the same faces for six weeks, you know, everybody needs to get along and, and have a good time. Fuck you. Same. And, you know, and we share our booze, which is important. I've been in a row with these guys for like a month now and I had a fucking blast and I'll do it anytime again. You guys fucking cool. I love you. Thanks. Right on. Who are you? Who are you? 
Are we taking you there right now? <laughs> Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> I'm uh, next time. I play. I'm a girl. I always felt like my penis is not bright. Yeah, my penis is not right either. <laughs> Wellness flakes. By Knips Rowling. Wellness flakes. <laughs> By Satan. <laughs> There's a few times on this tour where I got real drunk. Couple, right? And uh, I remember just talking to Tom like fanboy to the number 100% fanboy like being that guy like dude the first time I, I'll tell him my first time I heard Exodus stories and the fact that everyone is really cool when I do that and I do it all the time to Gary Tom uh, they're cool guys man they're straight up uh, you know pioneers who are also very humble and deal with the younger guys being you know fans and, and partying and they're getting old, and sometimes those guys make the younger guys like us look bad because they can't drink as much. Let's do Exodus! <laughs> ah, he's got to be some kind of Spanish serial killer or something, man. Man, he's crazy. Like he'd be, he'd be there in the pit, and then all of a sudden he'd just, he'd just look to God and go. And then just jump back into the pit and start rolling again. The guy is like absolutely the most metal person I may have ever met in my entire life. But we have no idea who he is, so he won't talk. We ask him, well, you know, what's your name? So what do you got to say, Fozzy, before we get there? And I've seen churches. Look into the camera and please churches. tell me what we're about to go see. Um, I think uh, the we see the most gothic building ever, everywhere fucking on this earth. Do you believe it was built by aliens? <laughs> <laughs> A church that's being built in Barcelona right now. Oh, dude, he's gonna throw that baby on the ground. Look at that. He's gonna throw that baby right on the ground. Hail it right on the sword. The guy's going, no, don't. And it won't be done for like another 120 years or, or something like that. Like it's just this huge endeavor. Big sea turtles right on the bottom. Where? Right there. Look at that big sea turtle right there. Foundations of the world rest on the backs of the great turtle. Did you just make that up? No, that was in the Gunslinger series. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty profound, Stephen King. It's really, it's really fantastic. It's really something to see. They are the fucking worst, man. They really are. They're so fucking gay. I'd rather watch Man of War. 
hope their plane crashes on the way to Bulgaria. So you know about the, um, the new um, show time for Exodus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two forty-five, right? Two. Yeah. Two forty-five, right? Yeah. Very soon, this will be a foul of people. <laughs> What's your highlight of the tour? No problem. Vakin. Who is Bonded by Blood? Ooh, wow, that's a tough one. Gary, myself, Kirk. Paul Bailoff, Dave Mustaine. Uh, Aaron Jellum, guitarist from Lost Rocket. Rick Hunold, Tom, Robbie, and a large group of friends. Uh, Rob McKillop. Uh, Matthias Prill, Matthias Vodka Prill, our best friend and actually our promoter in South America. Strange thing to do, exchange body fluids with men. I just did a little pin prick on my hand. Pretty much anybody who was like we found like to be really cool and was into cutting themselves, you know. Nowadays, you know, post AIDS and you start thinking about hepatitis and shit. It's not a very wise thing to do to be like mingling blood with people you you know you know but you don't know what their sexual history is, you know. Aaron Jellum and Paul were wasted and they were like <laughs> carving shit into their arms and like yeah. That was just a way of like welcoming people into the fraternity of Exodus, you know? <laughs> Razor blade, cross the palm of the hand like that. Just stupid drunken shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whole fucking record. Tribute to Bela. You know, we re we recorded the album for a few reasons. You know, uh, one to make it sound the way I wanted to, and that's knowing uh, it's not meant to be disrespectful to the original. You know, some people like that old dated sound. I want to hear it sonically, you know, perfect. You know, I want to hear it crushing, and and so we did it. We also did it. Uh, as a tribute to the songs themselves, to the album, to the guys who made it, you know? The rocks eat high, the burning flesh, the smell that died a grave. It's a good representation of what the band sounds like today. You know, the original doesn't disappear because we did this, nor should it. It's still our greatest album ever. This isn't meant to replace it, nor could it ever. First went out there to uh, get them to sign the contract. I flew out to San Francisco, and we finally got got their uh, signatures on the uh, contract. And lo and behold, as soon as it did that, Paul started a spitball fight in the house, and uh, people were running all over the place. And next thing I knew, there were pages of the contract all over the place. I'm lucky I put it even put it together. So it's a compliment when someone loves your debut so much that they really get upset about you tinkering with it in any way, you know, so how can I get mad at them? You know, they love Bonded by Blood, as as they should, and I'm thrilled to death that they do, you know. Um. Uh, we're all a bunch of kids back then, you know, uh, the early 20s, and went to the studio, had a lot of fun, a lot of smashed uh, studio pieces. Uh, we racked up the biggest bill for, for destruction at that studio, but uh, all in all, I think uh, things came out pretty well. One more time. You guys rule, man. Like, see? That's it. That sounded good. Actually. Fucking You're done. Right. The Fed Exodus shirt. That idea came because we chased the Fed Exodus drug shipment all across <laughs> the Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> <laughs> they just they kept showing up. We'd be like, we're in Allentown, right? Like, uh, we go. Let's man, get in the FedEx. And we get there, like, God, can you divert it to fucking uh, Poughkeepsie? What you want, Tyra? So what's going on, Gary? This is my first tattoo. We're going to de-virginize Gary Holt. Right. I figured if I'm going to go all in, I'm going to have him do it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh. 
So here we are at Andy's Sleep's house. Can rehearse for two days. So we're driving through the Alps. We're going from Italy to uh, Germany. Nick Barker, a drummer extraordinaire, one of uh, one of the he's one of the circle of friends of the band that you know we consider family and always have you know. You're an uber fan of Exodus. Absolutely. Um, since Kinder. Since yeah, and uh, and then you got to do a tour with them, a, a short tour because Tom took a vacation. So, how, what was that like? How was that experience? It's one of the best tours I've ever done in my life. for nearly 20 years. And all you guys treated me great. You know, we're friends anyway, and it just made for an even better tour. And uh, he's also the number one victim of the Sharpie attacks. He was our tour manager, and, and he just he just got fucking, he got so drunk. Because there's a rule on the bus. If you can make it to your bunk, no matter how drunk you are, you're, you're free and clear. But if you pass out in front lounge, back lounge, anywhere, if you're not in your bunk, the Sharpie will come out and get you. We started out with like a cock on his head, and the next thing you know, man, like half his head was done. Me and Rob painted him, and Rob painted him like a blue Sharpie, like in uh, Braveheart. We, we covered him with mayonnaise and then fucking Lee went to put mustard and give him like a mustard mohawk and the bus driver freaked out because he didn't want to get it on the seats and Lee started a fight with the bus driver and he's about to kick his ass I'm like, get him Lee, get him! And, it was and we just walk him up and he's like, come on Nick, let's go get some food, we're at the truck stop. And he walked out there shirtless, you know, all painted and didn't even realize walking into the truck stop trying to get some food and he's like, you know, half of his face is blue and people are kind of freaked out looking at him. Nick Markers Barkers. That was a good night. What else you got to say? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> I remember one time, it was, we hadn't been playing the Toxic Waltz and, uh, and then we decided to put it back in the set. I think it's when Zach came back into the band. And we didn't rehearse it, you know, we just played it and then when the solo came, I just fucking forgot. I totally forgot it and I was like, run over to the hit. Rick side of the stage, which was no help at all. <laughs> Gary side and Gary solo and I'm all fucking, I didn't know where I was. And I look back at Tom and Tom just goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> There's other moments where you, where I'm singing and, and just like the lyrics just leave. Like, I just, you draw a blank, you, you, you forget where you're at, or you, you, the lyrics are from another song that, you know I mean, like, there's, you know, 30, there's a lot of lyrics to remember, you know, especially when Gary writes, man, a fucking, yeah, yeah. Like each song's a fucking book, you know what I mean? <laughs> Paul, one of Paul's favorite tricks was he would go into a bar and he'd go to the owner, oh, I'm Paul Bailey from Exodus, yeah, you know, let's let's book a gig here. And he'd book a gig for Exodus at the place and then open a bar tab and just drink and drink and then never go back to that place again. <laughs> <laughs> Exodus fucking screw. <laughs> this is what a bus sounds like at night with a bunch of dudes sleeping on it. We were in Texas. Yeah, this freaky girl comes in. And so she's just walking around pretty much naked. And she had one of those little fakey cat of nine tails, like the fake ones, you know, not the ones with the real balls on the end, right? She walks over to Bailoff and she like hands him the, she gets in front of him and hands him the cat of nine tails and like gets down in front of him. And gets, I'll never forget it. Paul had the thing in his hand and he looked over at me. And, uh, <laughs> 
time and hit her like five or six times as hard as he could hit her. And like by the third hit, she realized what was happening and just Scooby Dooed off the fucking just off the front of the stage as fast as she could, man. And he beat the shit out of that girl, man. She had no idea what was coming. Man. And now it's time for another Exodus non-metal moment. Talk about the trip when, um... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh you don't back. think it is. Let's talk about, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is on the video. God, that one. <laughs> <laughs> you get that shit? Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Dude, I just sneezed so hard I blew a fucking disc. Tell me a good Rob story. When the uh, last show of the tour in the summer, you took your gig socks off right there on stage, and the fan grabbed him. He wanted him. Hold on, I'm gonna represent the socks here. All right, this is a sock, right? And he grabbed him just went. Oh, 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 he just drank. Oh, when you're thirsty, dehydrated. <laughs> drank Rob's gig sock. Oh, it's awful. Me for a minute. <laughs> It's the grossest thing I've ever fucking seen in my life. I've never seen anything like it. That guy just guzzled it. And I knew what was in that sock, dude. And, uh, what is fucking wrong with some of our fans? Rossi. Rossi. Oh, Rossi. <laughs> hey, if you were in Manowar, you'd be Rossi the bossy. Yeah. <laughs> Tape and light, there is, uh, there's only one guy who rivals vomit, and there's a little Japanese dude in Japan. Give me a good vomit story. Right about the time you piss all over Ross's clothes and the truck. Lucky to be alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky I didn't wake up and catch him. Yeah, yeah. You know, my favorite thing about Vomit, you know, is just when he'd get really blasted drunk and he'd just turn into Charlie Brown's teacher. You know, <laughs> and now for another non metal moment. So you're putting on makeup? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Age defiant wrinkle cream. Age defiant wrinkle cream. Uh, a party we were having at my house in Berkeley in uh, 87 or 88. Of course, I can't remember the year because I was so blotto then. It doesn't really matter. Pick a year. You know, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll was out of control. And I think we'd run out of one of the drugs and uh, <laughs> Paul and Jeff Fogarty from uh, you know Creedence Clearwater Revival what a Tom Fogarty's son and Jeff Weller and and Jeff's dog and myself went in a car to go get we'll just say stuff whatever it was because I can't remember and they were arguing about stuff and I don't know why we brought the dog but the dog attacked Paul in the car and so the car and Jeff Fogarty was driving and so he was swerving and it was getting all crazy and for some reason Paul got so pissed at Jeff Fogarty because Jeff Weller's dog attacked him that he kicked Jeff Fogarty's hands while he was driving and wound up breaking his finger. <laughs> <laughs> needless to say, we needless to say, we still got the mission accomplished. We came back, and everybody was pissed right. off. But uh, I think that was also the night Paul punched a hole in, right. in the wall of my house too. Yeah. Yeah. But like I say, it's an honor to be with these guys. With, oh, I mean, nearly you know, 30 years of friendship and all that shit, and we're all still here. God bless you. We went to Paul. Disneyland together. God bless you. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Like and these you, guys man. are the best. Exodus masterpiece of brutality. <laughs> so we rented this house to live together and record together. We're going all Norway on this trip. We wanted to get in touch with our black metal root. Gary Holt, say hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Say hi to our cult, Riff Officer. He's here to report any substandard riffage. <laughs> what's your plan for this record? What's your, what's your f major goal to make happen? To crush everything and make everything else obsolete and to set the bar higher than anybody could possibly reach. Oh, yeah, yeah.
What head are you gonna? What head are you going with? Do you know yet? Well, we got Randall PV modded Marshall and Angle, but the Angle is the shit. Is it? Scratch track sounds better than most people's album tracks. <laughs> All comes out in the vocals at the end of the day. Not to put any pressure on you. <laughs> Anything yeah, is the melody interfering with the. I think that would still fit better in the mix if it's center track and not a left or right. Yeah, I agree with this. This makes metal heavier. Is it very hold the vegetarian? Yeah. Oh. This is the biggest poser vegetarian ever. So yeah, you're a vegetarian, but you eat beef, pork, chicken, and fish, but just not sushi, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's raw fish. That's just wrong. That's wrong on many levels. Gary <sighs> okay, Holt's one of a kind, people. You can go to 45. Yeah. Like we well, had this problem last time, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Give me Jack's pillow, I'll clean it on that. <laughs> so it's been a long day of metal. How do you feel? Hmm. There's always room for more metal. There's always room for more metal. Oh, yeah. God, that is the most ugly fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. He's pretty gnarly looking, man. What are you talking about you, not the spider? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fucking thing. Dude, he's got a fly on him right now. Look at his big old fangs and shit, dude. He's gnarly. Oh! you play some bass today, Jack? Yeah. If they ever stop wanking. <laughs> Okay, I've just finished my tracks, did the last one, here's my victory lap, and we got Rob Dukes coming up, you might be able to hear him up there uh, warming up, he's going to be right up in that, in that room right up there, so we're going to try to get some, uh, some of Rob screaming through this beautiful forest here. Oh, there he is. 
Mm-hmm. He's warming up as if it makes a difference. Me, 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 me. That's all right. People around here, they need a little bit of Satan. It's fucking big, man. <laughs> What's up, buddy? This motherfucker will come in the fucking house. <laughs> What's up, dude? No, I'm not missing. What? Hey! Burn! Honey, what? Burn! All right, cracking the whole time. You hear how loud that is? It's crazy. The neighbors think someone's being killed in here. Pretty loud out here, isn't it? Burn! Hollywood burn! It's funny. I notice Rob plays air guitar when he does that. His hands immediately go up into like guitar pose. It's killer. Burn! Hollywood burn! I got you playing guitar on that one. It's really funny. It's crazy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Gary Holt, uh, you've got to, uh, got to hear what he just said. Hang on. Do, do you care? Yeah, I got any Christmas. So I, I said, Gary, what have you got me for Christmas? And what did you say? The pleasure of working with me. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> That's why it was so difficult. It was so difficult for me because and Andy Steve couldn't do it. Now Gary Holt can't do it. So should, I'm not that bad of a guitar player. We get Kevin Hayborn to sing you song. Yeah. Why don't you just do some really cool Dragon Force type tapping? <laughs> Alright, she just puked in it. That's real, okay. Yeah, that's nice. Puked in it? This is a good bit. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> this is good, this is good. Here we go. Ah, that's fucking real spot. Bleh. <laughs> 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 that was some chocolate ice cream, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
That was fucked up, wasn't it? It sounds like I think it sounds aggressive. I think it sounds good. It yeah. sounds like you're actually playing it rather than worrying about it. Well, I think it sounds like I did it. Yeah, that's what that's exactly what I was gonna say. It sounds like Rob Dukes did it. You better redo that thing. I agree with that one. I see why it took you five years to make a heathen album now. <laughs> How is it working with Lee Altus? Fucking hell. Have, I, have we gone grey on this side now? <laughs> Did Lee, explain it. Yeah. Lee, Lee just weakened me, basically. I mean, He weakened your soul, Yeah, didn't he? I mean, these two notes. I mean, listen. <laughs> listen. Listen, listen. Everyone's going to really appreciate that when I buried it in the mix. <laughs> it's there. I mean, it just gives it flavour. Yeah. So explain your why, why we just did that. I mean, literally, dude, that was like 200 takes. Yeah. Can you explain why? Can you for just for the just look for that one that makes you happy? I know. I understand. So you're not happy with that solo? No, I mean, I mean, I, you're it's never happy. With it. Look, I mean, it's like you know, like who said that? Somebody told me this. Thanks. You're never really done with the project, like the album. You always want yeah, to keep doing. Just that. It was the quote was like that: you never finish your album. You know, you just never finish the project. You're abandoning it. Yeah. You know, and that's sure. basically because it's always like you just sit there and go, okay, it could be better. It could be better. I can do better. After playing the last album 200 times or 300 shows that we've done since, don't you think now if we walked in to record them, they would be 100 times better? Sure, but that's why the next album gets better and the next album gets better. If you would play those songs better now, then doesn't it make sense to go out and tour those songs for a while and before you record them and play them and yeah, live well, with well, them? Well, and well, I know why, because what's gonna either. happen is we're gonna re-record all our albums later. That's right. At the great end, idea. when when we That's can't a great idea. this way, fans will love that idea. Right, we'll re-record <laughs> all our own albums again after we've played them live two hundred times and really gotten good at playing so them. So we'll, we'll release each album twice. Yeah, you opening for Iron Maiden? Fuck and yeah! And you're the only opener for it's Iron on my Maiden. On birthday. On your birthday, wow! Best birthday present ever. My friend brought Iron Maiden home. Just because of the picture, he bought, went to Berkeley and bought it just because of the picture. And we stared at it for two hours. Ooh, ah. And then we put it on, and we were like, fuck, this is amazing. Three weeks later, Exodus, we started playing that shit at... Uh, you and Kirk, parties, right? Like parties, all that whole... Yeah, with Kirk. Yeah. Uh, and uh, people thought they were originals because nobody had heard Iron Maiden yet. <laughs> nice. So they're like, we love that song of yours, Running Free. We're like, that ain't our song, dude. <laughs> Paul or Bruce? Both. You can't have both. Oh man. Dude, you can't that's have both. Like, you know, that's like Bail off of Zetro you know, Dukes. Like, it's I know like, it's, it's the like whole thing. <laughs> I know it's the <laughs> Yeah, on a smaller level. Yeah. That's, like uh, the mini, that's the mini level, but that's I'm like saying ribeye porterhouse. No, you know? it's not. It's you you They both taste great. I'd rather have Bruce fly my plane. <laughs> I mean my you know, my favorite album is definitely with you know with Paul. It's killers, you know. Yeah. But, you, know, you can't fuck with killers. You're opening for Iron Maiden this week. How stoked are you? Okay. Yeah? <laughs> never, never really liked Iron Maiden. Never. Bruce or Paul? Bruce Kulik? Bruce or Paul? <laughs> Paul Diano for sure. What are you packing 
for a trip to go up and find Maiden. What are you wearing on stage? Exodus shorts and Death Angel cut off shirts. I can show off these. What's that? Guns. The, are we going? Is that what we're saying? We're saying guns. <laughs> We're at the airport. I am motherfucking Navy. Viva la Chile! What happened? How much? 150. $150. How much you get caught charged? Ah. Nothing. You know why? Why? Well, not really. Because you're wearing that. Because you're wearing that right there. Housekeeping! <laughs> oh, I'd be fucking doing a lot better if my fucking clothes and my shirt was here. No, it's not. Oh, you stink. You stink. You oh. fucking stink. Does that really smell bad? Yeah, your feet stink, dude. Gary Holt? Not as good as lunchtime. Okay. So we're cool. Look at Gary. He's got his little gay. He's got a little flashlight. <laughs> what a drag it is getting old. Let's see. Dude, look at this. I popped it and it hurts so fucking bad. It's like I didn't grow hair. Dude. I actually, like, it teared my eyes up. I popped it. I was like, ah, it was so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> Playing a stadium for people is just, I can't even imagine. You know, it's going to be great. We return once again to Dominic. Yes, we have. There he is. There he is. Hello, What's up? What's up? This will be the first metal band in the history of Chile to play a stadio in They denied Maiden to, uh, to do shows there before. We finally relented, but since we play first, we'll be, there. be forever known as the first band. Dude, this is their fucking over the crowd camera. Iron Maiden for you. They were that band that a friend of mine, Merle Hall, bought the album in the import section based solely on the cover and, and the back live photo. Like, these guys must be killer, you know. I have no idea, but look at that thing on the cover. No one even knew it was his name. I don't think he was named Eddie yet, you know. And uh, we listened to that shit and we were covering those songs at backyard parties for free beer, you know. Everybody thought they were Exodus songs, you know, because no one had heard that shit, you know. We're, Doing Prowler and Running Free in the song. Whoa! And, uh, you know, and here we are about to play Santiago Chile with that band. Yeah, I'm not fucking. Hey, they can't avoid us for too long. Their dressing room is next to us. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doubt they're going to be in it, though. <laughs> stairs right there, motherfucker. Do what they say, not as they do. March in the tune of the Christian right. They can suck. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, man, pretty fucking. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> Life is fucking crazy. What did your mom say about Lee when she saw the DVD? Is that guy always drunk? You bien? You bien? Very bien. Very good. Yeah, right on. Iron Maiden! Iron Maiden!
Nice fanny pack. Uh, What's up, man? How you doing, man? I'm good, hey, man. Where are you from? Are you, Earth. Are you with the band? Nah, we uh, just. You guys came to. Yeah, watch we just. The show? Yeah, we came down to watch the show. Are you from a city? Where are you from? I'm from uh, New York. Yeah. Yep. First time in Chile. He's a fucking liar. No, uh, third time actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're the opening band. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. Right nice to meet you. Man. You too, man. Right on, brother. Hey, we love you guys. Oh. Yeah, we love you. Oh, What's up, brother? <laughs> I started this shit. Excellent. Yeah, right. I started something. Wait a minute. You got you got the light. You got the light. That's it. Hey, man. Exodus. Exodus. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Oh boy. Look what I started. See you later, man. See you later, man. You guys have fun tonight, all right? Peace. Okay, this is gonna be a good one. Yeah, it is. Dude, you guys should have saw when they opened the gates. Dude, those dogs running in. Yeah, we saw it. We saw it. Let's go. We're walking. We're walking. Walking all the way down the corridor.
We've got to pull back. We've got a problem. What? Keep him talking for a few minutes. The whole show. Keep talking. Really? <laughs> really? You're going to keep rolling it? It's over. It's to the end. let you down. We went over three minutes and they yelled at us about it for a half hour. So, you know, we won't play with Maiden again, but bucket list. <laughs> Yep, it was uh, <laughs> definitely something, man. <laughs> uh, I was upstairs looking and I was watching one of the opening bands play and uh, man, I just saw one of the security guards just beat the living shit out of a couple people down there. This big security guy just punching kids. Some of these security guys, they go work out at Gold's Gym all day and then they, they want to fucking beat up little kids, you know, in the nighttime. It's what they get off on. Hey, security! You guys don't need to do that shit. I think you ride the club if they want. The stage manager was like, you know, I asked him straight up, I was like, hey, can we, uh, you know, the kids stage dive and all that? He's like, yeah, no problem. The more people that make up on this stage, the stage dive, the better it makes people to fucking feel. No reason to take a 15-year-old kid and just, I mean, just, yeah, you know? I called the dude out, we stopped the show, I started fucking yelling at him. What the fuck? Like, how come one minute everything's cool and the next minute it's not? He's like, well, you know, you can't stage dive. I'm like, yeah, but the fucking stage manager said we could. And so we go get the owner and we tell him, hey, you know, these guys are getting rough, you know, with these kids and there's no reason for it. You know, if somebody's doing something wrong, kick them out. But if they're just enjoying the show, you know, we don't want them, we don't want them roughed up and kicked out of the show. These are our fans. We encourage, you know, rowdy behavior at our shows. That's what you come to an Exodus show for, you know. That's fucking bullshit, dude. Why are you throwing now, if someone's down there fighting and beating people, or really being a drunken ass and and blindsiding people from behind, yeah, throw him out. You know, he's you know he's going over the top. That's fine. But when the kid's like a 115 pound 14 year old and he's being manhandled by his neck and thrown out of the club, that's not cool. Hey, if we don't care if they're up there, up here, why the fuck do you? Okay. Hey, So we just kind of started talking shit to the guy and then the whole thing kind of escalated and... Hey, you know, we got 15 year old kids coming up on stage. We don't care, so you shouldn't care. Remove this guy or we want, we're just not going to play anymore. He's not here to be beat up on kids. We appreciate your help. But these people are having fun. They're fucking kids. They're here to enjoy the show. They don't need you in the middle of this. I'm stateside. Throw me the fuck out. So basically, you know, it was like starting to turn into like a mini riot, you know. You guys are having some fun! You guys are having fun! And so the security left, you know, for a minute, and then the crowd went totally fucking crazy. As it progressed, it got worse, and then I, I, I kind of encouraged. I was like, fuck that guy, everyone stage dives. So, like, next thing you know, eight year old kids are up there, and it was like, it was fucking complete mayhem. And And you know, maybe someday we'll play there again. You know, um, you know, we didn't do anything maliciously. We just want the kids to have a good time. It was just a typical situation of, you know, kids wanting to thrash. Kids were just all over the stage and then they came and shut us down and shut the lights. And you guys chill out for one second. Let me explain something. I was told at the beginning of the day that you guys could jump on the stage and if you jump right on it, it would be all good. We 
said there was no stage diving and Rob said I had a meeting with you you said no problem stage diving if that's the case I mean we'll ask them not to do it because it's like well that's the rule of the club you know that's what I was told was I not did you tell me that I have no problem with that did you tell me that I have no problem with that you have no problem with that so and to be fair I mean uh, you know it wasn't like the whole security team I mean I was there were a bunch of those guys that were coming up to us and they're huge Exodus fans, you know. The reason I stopped that song is because your security guard was throwing the guy out for being on top of the crowd. Why is that a problem? You know, and then they admitted, and they said, well, we didn't expect this many people to show up. If we knew, we would put up a barricade and then it's okay to stage that which is kind of a silly thing to me you know it's like well what does the barricade have to do with anything you know really so they stage dive on stage or they stage dive and fall down in between the barricade because apparently the security guys that you have don't really give a shit about the kids you know? We demanded to they, you know, we saw this one kid getting kicked out. We demanded to bring him back in, or we, you know, we won't play. We, they brought him back in, and we got him on stage, and the place went crazy. You know, it's like, how many bands do that for their fans? They, they said, okay, you know, no more people on the stage, and we tried to be civil about it. You can make all these people up here. And I talked to the people in charge off stage and we sorted it out and and got the show back going. And but apparently we're banned, so fuck it. So what do you think about this? This is fucking brain hard, motherfuckers. <laughs> You know, but in the end, you know, we won because we got back onto the stage, we finished our set, they brought the fucking kid back in, and we can't go back to the pro room, but I really don't fucking care, you know. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll do anything to repair a relationship, you know, I, very few things are, you know, are so bad that the damage is permanent, you know, I mean, Maybe someday we'll play there again. People have been telling me that thrash metal's making a comeback for years and I always told them they were full of shit. But uh, this doesn't suck. It's what it's all about. Thank you. I mean it. Um, I'm sad I'm going home. I know, like, remember as tired. I want to go home, but like every good tour, I don't want it to end. We have a, at least another 20 cities we haven't even played. I'd rather these guys stay with us and we go out and like, we'll say our fucking teary eyed goodbyes later. The thrash guys are fucking stupid.